So where do I begin? I, I guess uh, I really don't know. It's an interesting one. As I was watching uh, Sarah's videos the other day, and obviously she's she's covered most of the bases pretty well. Um, I, I think it's just important, and no one asked me to do this. I want to put that out there first of all. But there's just been a couple of little things that have have irked me. Um, for those of you who know me, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. At the end of the day. Uh, there's not a whole lot of strangers in my world. Most people I meet, I, I kind of instantly have some kind of rapport with. But occasionally, there are people that I come across and I don't know. Uh, I, I just kind of get a bad vibe off of them. And uh, one of those would be Gen X. And I, I don't think that I've ever really hidden that. I, I, I don't think that I also at the same time, I never really made it a big deal I just kind of dealt with it you know because I think we've all got friends or, or maybe family members where they'll have a spouse significant other that we don't always vibe with for whatever reason but we kind of we just kind of deal with it for for whatever reason because we you know maybe it's just it's it's just easier to just not deal with it or or maybe we really care and respect that other person so we don't want to make any fuss um and not that, not to say in any way, shape, or form that, that anyone's right, wrong, or indifferent, but it's sometimes it's hard for us as people, I think, to really look at something and go, well, is it that? Is it the way it seems, or, or you know, am I just hearing one side of it, or, or, or what? But over time, things became more and more apparent to me, and um, I just wanted to kind of touch on a couple of those things. You know, I've I've known Jen for quite a while, several years now. Um, and I wouldn't have met her if it wasn't for Vine. There's there's no doubt about that. And I think Jen can even tell you the, the story after how we first met. It came with, uh, it was a dog abuse thing on Vine. And I, it was something, I, I there's two things I don't deal with. People fucking with kids and people fucking with animals. Like, that's just, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Like, there's no excuse for that in my book. And so Jen got to kind of see me when my, my fangs were out, my claws were out a bit more uh, when, when I was going off on that. So I think... She's told me before she was a little bit, I don't know if intimidated is the right word, maybe it is, a little bit intimidated by, by me at first because I, when I get pissed off about something, uh, you'll know it. There's just no doubt about that. Um, if, if you have to guess, I'm probably not. I, I could be agitated. I get agitated at a lot of things, but when I'm pissed off, you're going to fucking know it. And uh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hide my language at all on this. I didn't like the guy. I didn't like him from Jump Street. I just didn't like the vibe I got off of him. And it's real sad when you can get a vibe off someone through through words on a screen or, or what have you. And I didn't even know who he was for the longest, which was kind of an odd one to me. You know, there was not much mention of him. I never really saw him popping up. But I started noticing the more and more popularity that Jen got on, on these different mediums whether it was vine or whether it's facebook what wherever it may have been that that's when he slowly started coming out of the woodwork you know when jen would go to another city to to meet people or to participate in something or maybe even film something suddenly he became more prevalent and not saying he wasn't there before it's just it seemed more obvious to me uh that, that he was putting himself out there more there were a couple situations that stand out because I really started thinking about it after watching Sarah's videos and because I, I kind of wanted to say something and I've kept my mouth shut for a while. I don't have any exact specific things that, that I'm going to point out or anything, so sorry to disappoint you. But at the same time, I saw things that kind of concerned me. I remember one time it was up in New York. Uh, they were up there and Jen starts texting me late that night and I could tell she was in distress. I'm not even sure if she remembers that. I don't want to get into all the, the gory details, but it was obvious that there had been alcohol that had been consumed that evening. And uh, she was just seemed rather down and upset. And uh, she was leaving a venue and was trying to get back to her hotel and was having a little hard time. And I remember trying to navigate her through New York which I've never been to New York. So I'm literally trying on my phone, like trying to figure things out with her. And, and eventually it all worked out. I'm not even sure how much of this she remembers, honestly, but it's one of those things that stand out to me. And the whole time I'm thinking like, where is he at? Why is he not helping? Why is he not involved? Why is he not making sure that this lady in New York, and, and, and say what you will. Yes, I believe that, that everybody should have someone to walk with them in New York City. Maybe that's just a country boy in me, but I go to any big city. I like to have someone to have my back just in case. 
you know, I, I you're, you're not going to see me walking through a lot of downtown areas and bigger cities by myself. It's just probably not going to happen. Not that I'm terrified something is going to happen, but God forbid something does. It's nice to know that someone's got your back or at least can get you help. You know, it, it concerned me that evening greatly that here is a, a individual, I don't care if it's male, female, or whoever, but a single person that's obviously been drinking and is in distress and confused as to where they're at in this giant city and the person that should be concerned the most is nowhere to be found. Um, ultimately, obviously, she found her way back and, and nothing came to it or came from it, I should say, but good Lord, I, I, that's one of the things that really, really set me off and I, I kept my mouth shut and I'm kind of pissed I did. And then, um, you know, there were so many times, we, especially once we got to know each other a lot better, um, she would come to me and, and tell me little things here and there and how she was upset. And I, I get, too, that sometimes people just want to vent. You know, I think everyone has issues in their relationship, whether you're dating somebody, whether you're in a long-term relationship, whether you're married, whether you're divorced. There's relationships across the board. And I understand that sometimes people get frustrated in those relationships. And sometimes we'll say, like, oh, I just, I, I'm going to leave. Or, you know, I can't stand this person or, or whatever. And it could just be in a moment. But those moments started becoming more and more frequent. And what really got me, and it may seem trivial to some, was one day out of the blue, I get a text. And I'm like, that's the same area code as Jen. But it wasn't Jen. It was him. And I just remember being so confused by that. And it took me a while. And finally, one day, I just asked Jen out of the blue. I was like, hey, how did he get my number? And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, Jen, how did he? I got a text. And he just started texting me like we're old buddies and stuff. And... You know, it's, I've said before, um, you know, veterans kind of have an instant connection. And I, I, I've mostly believed that, but he's a veteran as well, and it, which is one of those things where it just seemed odd to me. I, I wasn't seeing certain things I'm used to seeing in people. And I didn't understand why I was suddenly getting texted and, and why he had my number. And usually, Jen, Jen's given my number out to people before. There's no secret about that. But usually she'll let me know. Or it's somebody that she knows that I've got an established rapport with. There's certain people that you can just tell based on our interactions online that we have a certain rapport. And if someone wants to text me or, or call me, I don't I don't like to talk on phones. It better be an emergency if you call me. But if someone has my number, it's not the end of the world to me. I'm not gonna like condemn somebody, but it was odd to me. And when I asked her about it finally, she was like, No, I didn't I didn't give him your number. So that told me that at some point he'd gotten to her phone. And got my number and added it. And again, that may not seem big to, to, to you. Then again, it might. I don't know. But it was such an odd thing. And every interaction we had, it was kind of like going back to the Blake thing. I didn't like Blake. I flat out say it. I didn't like Blake. There was something about him. Um, I, I, I tolerated him because others did. Even when I went home one time to visit, he was working he, in town that time, just outside of Nashville for, for an H&M opening. And I made a point to go see him uh, just because of the relationships he had with mutual friends. Trying to be cool. You know, I always try to be cool with people. And, and, and you know, sometimes it's hard to get a read on people through text and, and, and those words we see on a screen. So I thought, you know, maybe if I go see this cat, it'll change my opinion, which it didn't. But I, I digress. I'm going off onto a different subject. But it's that same kind of vibe. It was another person that I tolerated and another person that was good at kind of putting up smoke screens and another person who was good at when Jen was having those down moments, they would play her a bit. And it pisses me off. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to touch on that. I needed to get that out there. That uh, A lot of, of, of things that, that Sarah mentioned, obviously Jen would have a hard time saying sometimes. And, and I think it's important to, to get it from a different perspective. So I'm, I'm glad Sarah put those things out there. And I don't have a ton to add to the conversation, but I can assure you that a lot of those things that I saw her mentioning in those videos were things that I was getting, you know, texted or called about. Because there have been times that, that Jen has picked up the phone and called me, which is rare. When Jen picks up the phone and calls me, I know I need to pick up because there's something fucked up. And, uh, yeah, so I don't really know what else to say other than uh, I, I guess I'm just kind of confirming that a lot of the things that Sarah has said are, are, are very spot on. And some of the things that she mentioned... I may not have even known the full scope at the time um, because I think Jen has done a good job of trying to 
maybe minimize that the impact uh, and kind of hide some of that. And I think that's a defense mechanism a lot of us do. We'll downplay certain things just so people aren't asking questions or, or, or being as prying as, as they would normally. Because I think Jen knows if she says certain things to me, I'm going to start asking questions. I'm going to start pushing buttons and wanting to know why. Because uh, the, the ginger in me will come out and I can be a hothead. So, yeah, I didn't like that bitch. I don't know how else to say it. You know, I wish him the best on his future endeavors, I guess. I'm seeing a pattern of, of behavior repeating itself again from, from what I can tell. But it's another one. I blocked that number out of my life. So, uh, yeah, basically I'm just here to validate everything that Jen and Sarah have said. They didn't ask me to do this. No one's put me up to it. Uh, I get nothing out of it. Uh, just wanted to, to kind of help confirm some of that. So everything that you saw that if there wasn't a receipt for it, I can pretty much tell you I'm the walking receipt right here. So until next time, that's my two cents, and we'll talk to you later.